one day, Simba, the sun will set on my time here and will rise with you as the new king. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 best celebrity voice performances in animated films. All right, everyone, fresh start. We're gonna have a good day, which will turn into a good week, which will turn into a good year, which turns into a good life. Hi, I'm Dory. We can stay up late, swapping manly stories, and in the morning, I'm making waffles. For this list, we're taking a look at big name actors that loaned their voices to big screen characters, rendered through animation, motion capture, or practical effects. We've excluded voiceover performances from television and celebrities who have done extensive voice acting work, so Mark Hamill's Joker will not be on the list. What voice performance is your favorite? Let us know in the comments. Number 20, Jay Baruchel as Hiccup Horrendous Haddock III, the How to Train Your Dragon franchise. So, what should we name it? Yeah, itchy armpit it is. Naturally possessing a nerdy, nasally voice, Jay Baruchel couldn't have been better suited to play Hiccup, a scrawny Viking living in his mighty father's shadow. Keeping this much raw Vikingness contained, there will be consequences! I'll take my chance. A lesser actor might have portrayed this character as a one-dimensional nerd. Baruchel turns in a multi-layered performance, however, bringing out Hiccup's strength, wisdom, and compassion as he forms a powerful bond with a dragon. Huh. Toothless. I could have sworn you had... <laughs> Teeth. As this series progresses, Baruchel develops Hiccup into a brave, noble leader with a great deal of depth. All the while, Baruchel maintains an offbeat charm that distinguishes Hiccup from the rest of the crowd. You never cease to amaze me, bud. Thank you. <laughs> Number 19, Samuel L. Jackson as Lucius Best, Frozone, The Incredibles franchise. Yeah, you say peace. I kind of think you mean the other thing. A few years before debuting as Nick Fury in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Samuel L. Jackson saved the day as this slick superhero. Gotcha! Possessing ice powers and a laid-back personality, Frozone is cool in every sense of the word. So as you can imagine, Jackson was an ideal casting choice. You wanna catch a robber? No. Tell you the truth, I'd rather go bowling. Look, what if we actually did what our wives think we're doing? In The Incredibles, Jackson hits every one-liner out of the park, making Frozone sound like a total badass. He additionally hits all the right notes as Frozone's alter ego, Lucius Best, acting as a supportive best friend to Bob Parr. Hey, is the night still young? You're very late. How do I look? Good? Oh, the mask. You still got the mask. Of course, Jackson's best line delivery occurs during an argument between Lucius and his wife, Honey. We'll never get tired of hearing Jackson ask, where's my super suit? Honey! Where's my super suit? What? Where is my super suit? Number 18, John C. Riley as Wreck-It Ralph, the Wreck-It Ralph franchise. Anywho, what else? Uh, I'm a wrecker. I wreck things professionally. I'm gonna wreck it! Wreck-It Ralph is a different kind of Disney villain. He's not sinister, calculating, or even really bad. He actually wants to be a good guy, but simply doesn't understand what being a hero is all about. Blame me if you think video games have ruined the world. John C. Riley is delightful as the titular character, supplying him with a childlike innocence. As we all know, however, children can be selfish, naive, and aggressive too. Well, unless you've got a go-kart hidden in the fat folds of your neck, I can't help you. <laughs> in Ralph's case, he's basically a troubled kid trapped in an overgrown body. Even when Ralph is at his worst, though, Riley still manages to make him lovable and even identifiable. It's game over for both of you. No, just for me. Ah. Behind his hostile tendencies, there's an individual with a genuine soul, which Riley brings out of Ralph as he discovers his true purpose in life. Turns out I don't need a medal to tell me I'm a good guy. Because if that little kid likes me, How bad can I be? Number 17, Chris Pratt as Emmett Brukowski, The Lego Movie. No, uh-uh, no, not that wrong. And that's it, check. Emmett may seem like a run-of-the-mill construction worker on the surface. Thanks to Chris Pratt's endearing performance, though, he's truly one of a kind. He's just as blind as a 
guy whose eyes don't work. An ordinary minifigure with a very special destiny, Emmett emerges as both a goofball and an unlikely action hero. Pratt flawlessly expresses all of Emmett's passion, creativity, and enthusiasm. <laughs> Even when he's performing the most routine tasks, Emmett sounds like he's on top of the world. Well, hi there, I'm a cowboy! Bang, 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 bang! Shoot, 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 bullet, bullet, gun! Zap, 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 pow, zap, pow! Yeah. What are they looking at? I, 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 I made a mistake. Pratt also brings humanity to the character, molding this yellow brick into an encouraging role model we care about. Equally silly and sincere, no actor in Hollywood could likely capture Emmett's essence quite like Pratt. Look, I, uh, I watch a lot of cop shows on TV, and isn't there supposed to be a good cop in that scenario also? Number 16, Bradley Cooper as Rocket Raccoon, the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise. By the time the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie premiered, Bradley Cooper already had two Oscar nominations under his belt. They were really easy to steal. You'd think that voicing a genetically engineered raccoon would be a step back. Don't call me a raccoon! But Rocket turned out to be one of Cooper's most beloved characters. While he had hilarious dialogue to work with, Cooper's smart-ass delivery and timing made the character feel whole. Let's make something clear. This one here is our booty. Whenever Rocket speaks, we don't hear Cooper putting on a thick accent. We just hear Rocket. How on earth were they gonna turn us over when you only gave them a count of five? We didn't have time to work out the minutia of the plan. This is what we get for acting altruistically. While often a source of comedic relief, Cooper also does an authentic job at bringing out Rocket's fear and insecurity. He called me vermin. She called me rodent. Cooper played an integral role in molding Rocket into a fully fleshed out character, or we guess a furred out character in this case. <laughs> That's a fake laugh. It's real! Number 15, Will Ferrell as Megamind. Megamind. Even the smallest bite from Arachnus Deathicus will instantly paralyze. Oh! Get it off! Will Ferrell has a knack for taking potentially unlikable characters and giving them a lovable quality. Megamind is a perfect example. An alien who aspires to take over Metro City, Megamind is egotistical, manipulative, and dastardly. <laughs> Deep down though, he's not exactly evil. He just sees super villainy as his only career option. Of course, once he finally defeats his nemesis, his existence suddenly lacks meaning. Always thirsty, never satisfied. I understand you, little well-dressed bird. Farrell totally throws himself into the role, having a ton of fun playing a childish mastermind who's prone to failure. My face is on fire right now. Um, <laughs> if you're gonna do this at home, don't do it with a can of spray paint. Use... <laughs> Go to a makeup or a hobby store. Simultaneously, Farrell makes us sympathize with this misguided anti-hero who just needs a push in the right direction. You did it. You won. Well, I finally had a reason to win. You. Number 14, George Clooney as Mr. F.F. Foxy Fox. Fantastic Mr. Fox. Because I'm a wild animal. He's the man synonymous with the phrase movie star, so we had to constantly remind ourselves that he's the one playing the lead in this stop motion flick. And the greatest, the quote unquote fantastic Mr. Fox. Described as a natural choice by Wes Anderson, Clooney's charm adds a certain gentlemanly quality to the already fantastic titular Fox. <laughs> Unlike other animated films, the voices were recorded on location in an old farmhouse to get the most natural performances and as an attempt to replicate the movie's mood. You really are kind of a quote-unquote fantastic fox. I try. As a result, the comedy boasts the suave nature of Clooney's character, recounting the group's bizarre heist capers. It's almost like the remake of Ocean's Eleven. Hey, wait a minute. When was the last time you were in Vegas? Number 13. Amy Poehler as Joy, Inside Out. So hold on, guys. It's Broccoli! Yes! Although Mindy Kaling as Disgust is certainly an inspired casting choice, Amy Poehler's portrayal of Joy is simply irresistible. The very definition of happiness, Joy attempts to put a smile on young Riley's face when life gets her down. Being a basic human emotion, Joy easily could have been a one-note character. All right, everyone, fresh start. We're gonna have a good day, which will turn into a good week, which will turn into a good year, which turns into a good life. 
Polar's performance brings a surprising amount of complexity to the role, however. Although Joy constantly tries to think positive, she eventually comes to understand the importance of sadness. Joy, you gotta fix this! Get up there! Sadness, it's up to you. Me? Sadness? Sadness? I can't, Joy. Yes, you can. Riley needs you. With just her voice, Polar is able to light up the screen while also making the audience bawl their eyes out, taking us on an emotional journey unlike any other. I'll try. Bing bong. I promise. Number 12. Benedict Cumberbatch as Smaug, The Hobbit Franchise. This mountain dragon is brought to life through Benedict Cumberbatch's stellar voiceover work, as well as his motion capture performance. I smell you. I hear your breath. Commanding the silver screen, Cumberbatch supplies Smaug with a huge, bombastic vocal presence. At the same time, Cumberbatch also brings a fair deal of sophistication to the role. You care about them. Watch them die. Every line Cumberbatch recites makes the audience feel as if a ginormous snake is slithering around them. Even if Smaug were the size of Bilbo Baggins, Cumberbatch's deep, intimidating voice would still send a shiver up our spines. Impressive. What else do you claim to be? That's the true mark of a great villain, and an even greater actor. Plus, it's always a pleasure to see Sherlock and Watson together, even when one's a dragon and the other's a hobbit. Perhaps it is time I paid them a visit. <sighs> Number 11, Dwayne The Rock Johnson as Maui, Moana. The gods have given me a man! When you need somebody to voice a demigod, you can't do better than a superstar of Mr. Johnson's caliber. Now he always has time for his fans. The Rock is already a very animated person, especially in the eyebrows. His natural charisma translated flawlessly to animation. Men and women, both, all. Not a guy-girl thing. I, you know, Maui is a hero to all. You're doing great. Although Johnson was tailor-made for Maui, the retired wrestler turned actor didn't come from a singing background. Regardless, he was excited to take part in Disney's tradition of classic musical numbers. Open your eyes, let's begin. Yes, it's really me, it's Maui, breathe it in. The Rock spent months practicing your welcome, and his dedication shines through in the final product. Well, anyway, let me say you're welcome, you're welcome. for the wonderful world you know. Through the song and his overall performance, Johnson finds just the right balance of being egotistical yet lovable. What's that for? That's a uh, man's discovery of Nanya. What's Nanya? Nanya business. He shapeshifts Maui into a hero we want to follow, even though he may throw you in the water along the way. Number 10, Billy Crystal as Michael Mike Wazowski, the Monsters, Inc. franchise. Call yourself a monster! Ah! Upon first look, Billy Crystal seems out of place as the one-liner spouting, one-eyed monster. Scary feet, scary feet, oh, the kid's away! But upon closer inspection, his performance actually brings a much-needed balance to John Goodman's kind yet deep voice as Sully. Look, you and I are a team. Nothing is more important than our friendship. The energy and excitement the actor brings is not just what makes him good, though. When leading the 2013 prequel, Crystal digs out a lighter and softer tone for his more sympathetic moments. I knew I was scary. I didn't know I was that scary. In whichever circumstance Mike Wazowski finds himself, Crystal adapts to put forward that best possible chemistry. The team of Wazowski and Sullivan are going to change the world starting today! Number 9. Mike Myers as Shrek, the Shrek franchise. Why are you following me? While his previous characters were eccentric yet one-dimensional, Shrek is a package of vicious loneliness and sarcasm, yet also a kinder soul all effectively demonstrated through the actor's voice. Of course! Really? No. Not to say that his performance isn't helped by Eddie Murphy as the dim-witted donkey, as the pairing's mishaps are only complemented by their bond as talented voice actors. Why don't you go celebrate your freedom with your own friends? Hmm? But, uh, I don't have any friends. Shrek is not only one of the best voice performances by a celebrity, but also one that enhances Mike Myers' career rather than simply being a side gig. Now, where were we? Number 8. Jack Black as Po Ping, the Kung Fu Panda franchise. I'm gonna do something I never thought I'd be able to do. 
I'm going to teach Kung Fu. Jack Black is still one of the most energetic and physical comedic presences around. Whoa, the Furious Five. You're so much bigger than your action figures. Except for you, Mantis. You're about the same. Black was tailor-made to voice Poe, a chubby panda who lives and breathes kung fu. Almost everybody doubts Poe when he's singled out as the dragon warrior. So, so, so what? What, I don't know Chi! I don't know Chi! I don't know if I'm even the dragon warrior! I don't even know if I'm a panda! I don't know who I am! Regardless, Poe steps up to the challenge with an appetite to learn. Poe's eagerness wonderfully complements the stern, authoritative master Shifu, who's voiced by Dustin Hoffman in a strong performance. Poe, the day you were chosen as Dragon Warrior was the worst day of my life. By far, nothing else came close. Black makes the audience root for Poe every step of the way, evening out the character's gullibility, clumsiness and insecurity with wit, determination, and confidence. And now, free the five! Disc of destruction! <laughs> Number seven, Steve Carell as Felonius Gru, the Despicable Me franchise. I know how much you like to laugh. Known for his live-action roles in romantic comedies and as an awkward manager on TV's The Office, What's up? What better choice is there to play a gruff and foolish jelly manufacturer slash supervillain? It's like my heart is a tooth and it's got a cavity that can only be filled with children. Almost indistinguishable as his previous 40-year-old virgin, Steve Carell's Russian-like accent is dead on and presents a mad cartoon doctor perfectly in these 3D computer animated comedies. Next, we are going to steal! Pause for effect. His performance channels the great Mel Blanc in Gru's outlandish reactions to his failures and comeuppances, but also provides a softer quality for his more sympathetic moments. You gave us back! I know, I know, and it is the worst mistake I ever made! Weaving in and out of his tones, Carell never loses the cartoon taste of his performance, and that can only be a great thing. Will you read us a bedtime story? No. Number six, Jeremy Irons as Scar, the Lion King. Oh dear, I've said too much. Well, I suppose you'd have found out sooner or later. This Britain-born actor presents a brilliant gravitas to the greedy brother of Mufasa in this musical epic. Kill him. The foppish villain of the animal kingdom has a voice talent more in common with a Shakespeare tale than a Disney film. Much like the story itself, actually. Murderer! No, Simba, please. Tell them the truth. But it's the quarrels between Jeremy Irons and his on-screen brother, James Earl Jones, that propel our ears to bliss, both presenting a strong clash of bellowing and snarly voices. Brother, help me! We love Jeremy Irons particularly for the way his voice almost dances through his plotting nature, especially when he informs dear Simba of his most famous surprise. And here's my little secret. I killed Mufasa. No! Number five, Ellen DeGeneres as Dory, the Finding Nemo franchise. Hi, I'm Dory. Speaking of chemistry, how do you make an uptight clownfish and a mind-numbing fool work this well together? Can I help you? Something's wrong with you, really. Obviously most known for her talk show these days, Ellen DeGeneres uses a playful innocence to combat the harsher tones of Albert Brooks's Marlin the Clownfish in the first flick of this Pixar film series. When life gets you down, you know what you gotta do? I don't wanna know what you gotta do. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. What do we do? We swim, swim. Her lighter optimism is so unique to the tone of the film that when thinking of DeGeneres' big screen work, she's practically synonymous with her character of Dory, which led to a fantastic sequel. I'm sorry, but I really, really, really think we should swim through. And I'm really, really done talking about this. Over we go. Come on, trust me on this. Number four, Eddie Murphy as Donkey, the Shrek franchise. The franchise may be called Shrek, but we all know it was his noble steed who stole the show, especially in the first movie. That was really scary. And if you don't mind me saying, if that don't work, your breath certainly will get the job done, cause you definitely need some Tic Tacs or something. Eddie Murphy had already voiced a few animated characters in film and television. You're gonna have to trust me. 
and don't you slap me no more. We clear on that? But Donkey benefited the most from his rapid fire delivery and uncontainable energy. Bringing his comedic A-game to the table, almost everything that comes out of Donkey's mouth is a laugh riot. That is one dazzling smile you got there. And do I detect a hint of minty freshness? That is, except for the occasional heartfelt moment, which Murphy also brings a gentle sincerity to. When we met, I didn't think he was just a big, stupid, ugly ogre. Although the performance didn't garner him an Oscar nomination, Murphy did become the first actor to score a BAFTA nomination for voice acting. Murphy also deservingly won the Annie Award for Best Male Performance in an Animated Feature. Ogres are like onions. They stink? Yes. No. Oh, they make you cry? No. Oh, you leave them out in the sun, they get all brown, start sprouting little white hairs. Number three, James Earl Jones as Mufasa, the Lion King. Drawing inspiration from epics like Hamlet and the Ten Commandments, the Lion King needed a cast that could supply the same level of gravitas. One day, Simba. The sun will set on my time here and will rise with you as the new king. James Earl Jones brought the most majesty to his performance as Mufasa. Take Nala home. I've got to teach my son a lesson. Whenever you hear Jones speak, you think to yourself, now that's a voice worthy of a king. Being brave doesn't mean you go looking for trouble. But you're not scared of anything. I was today. Although Jones has one of the most distinctive voices in the world, it never feels like we're listening to a celebrity. Jones becomes Mufasa. Simba, you have forgotten me. No, how could I? You have forgotten who you are. The character is best remembered for his commanding nature, but Jones adds dimensions to Mufasa. The cheat is a hard Stay up, Stay low I to the ground. Cheat. He captures Mufasa's playfulness while bonding with Simba, the fear in the pit of his stomach when Scar betrays him, and his stern yet affectionate side when it's time to teach a lesson. Cause nobody messes with your dad. Come here, you. Oh no, no! <laughs> ah. Number two, Tom Hanks as Woody, the Toy Story franchise. Usually when an actor voices as an animated character for multiple movies, it can start to sound like they're only interested in the steady paycheck after a while. What does a space ranger actually do? He's not a space ranger! He doesn't fight evil or, or shoot lasers or fly! This has never been the case with Tom Hanks' Woody. You are a toy! You weren't the real Buzz Lightyear, you're, a, uh, you're an action figure! In each Toy Story film, Hanks gave Woody another layer of depth. Like Buzz, identity is the key theme at the center of Woody's arc. Over in that house is a kid who thinks you are the greatest, and it's not because you're a space ranger, pal. It's because you're a toy. When we first meet the sheriff, he views himself as Andy's favorite toy and the leader of his fellow playthings. Help us! The barn's on fire! I've got your critters. No need to worry. Woody saves the day again! <laughs> We see Woody gradually transition out of these roles throughout the series, and Hanks makes that evolution feel 100% genuine. Andy's mom thought you were trash. Yeah, after he put us in a trash bag. And called us junk. Uh, yeah, I know, it looks bad, but guys, you gotta believe me. Thanks to his versatility as a comedic and dramatic actor, Hanks fashioned Woody into one of cinema's most complex animated protagonists. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Johnny Depp as Rango. Rango. You might say I'm what Hill's already raised up. Name's Rango. Jerry Orbach as Lumiere. Beauty and the Beast. Good. So you fall in love with her, she falls in love with you, and poof, the spell is broken. We'll be human again by midnight. Dakota Fanning as Coraline. Coraline. I was flying through the air and it was, oh, it was magic. You do like it here, don't you, Coraline? Uh-huh. James Gandolfini as Carol, where the wild things are. Everything you see is yours. Oh, except that hole over there, that's Iris. But I mean, the tree's yours, but the hole is Iris. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Robin Williams as the genie, Aladdin. 10,000 years will give you such a crick in the neck. 
Alibaba had 40 thieves and Scheherazade had a thousand tails, but there will only ever be one Robin Williams. Aladdin! Hello, Aladdin. Nice to have you on the show. Can we call you Al or maybe just Din? Or how about Lobby? In Mrs. Doubtfire, the comedian states that he does voices, and he's correct. I do voices. What do you mean, you do voices? Well, I do voices. His ecstatic performance is such a powerful addition to this musical fantasy that it almost changes the tone entirely once the genie is introduced. What would you wish of me? The ever impressive. The one contained. But never duplicate. 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 Not only that, but his high octane manner drives the second half so much that Disney aired the movie on TV in tribute to Williams following his 2014 death and there's no arguing the actor and comedian deserved all the honor and praise he has received. All of you, come over here, big group hug, group hug. Ooh. <laughs> Do you mind if I kiss the monkey? Mwah. Ooh, hairball. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.